Hello and welcome to another video here at TD Channel. Uh, today we're gonna take a look at one of the most uh, basic and fundamental uh, operations used in computer graphics uh, and this operation is called the dot product. Uh, this is an operation that's usually performed between uh, two vectors or vector types so for example you can do it between a vector and a normal uh, you know a normal and a normal or a two vectors and uh, it's an operation that is extremely powerful uh, mainly because it uh, gives you facing ratios and facing ratios ratios are extremely important in computer graphics so uh, before we continue a little bit on how it can be used let's take a look at the definition and how it is computed so if we go over here and look at uh, Wikipedia which is where a lot of stuff seems to be these days um, you can read some stuff over here what it does and everything but basically here's the definition and what you see here it's saying that the dot product between two vectors is equals to the multiplication of each of its components so if you have a vector uh, let me make this a little bit bigger so if you have a vector uh, that goes from A1, A2 all the way to AN in the case of 3D almost always they're going to be A1 to A3 and a vector call, uh, that goes from B1, B2 and B3 then the dot pro product is computed by multiplying A1 times B1 plus A2 times B2 plus A3 times B3 and if the vector is really long you can continue doing this uh, you know for all the components basic, basically that's what this means but we only need three of these multiplications to be able to uh, to do the dot product um, so let's uh, let me bring up this file over here which is where I'm going to demonstrate some of the uh, different uh, properties of the dot product but before we do anything over here let's go ahead and, and prove uh, kind of what uh, you know the definition is so I'm gonna I hit play by mistake. Let me go back here. I'm going to go up and uh, I'm going to go ahead and define here. Let me see if there's a way to make the text bigger. I don't think there is. Um, well, hopefully we can make this better or zoom it on post-processing. Uh, basically, I'm going to go ahead and create a, a vector called A uh, with the Houdini vector class with values 0, 1, 0, 3, and 0, 6. So you see the values of all these three components, they all add up to 1, so basically this is a normalized vector. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and then I'm going to do the same for another uh, vector called B. Right? So right now I'm using Houdini, and pretty much every 3D application that supports scripting, it's going to support vectors, and if they support vectors, they're going to support dot product somehow. So in Houdini, the way that is supported through Python is basically you do a dot and then you type the word dot. And basically what you have to give it here is the name of the variable that you want to do a dot against. So in this case, it's going to be B. And we go ahead and close this. And if we hit enter, you're going to see that the value is this number right here, 0 0.27, 0, 0 is all the way to 2. Well, let's go ahead and confirm that we get that if we multiply items individually. So if do, we do A0 times B0 plus A1 times B1 plus A2 times B2, and we hit enter, you'll see that we get pretty much the exact same value, 27, 0 0.27 all the way down to 0. So that pretty much proves that you know this right here this is pretty much exactly what we did but we ended up with three um, is how you can compute the dot product so right now it doesn't really tell you much this number uh, but let's move over to the next interesting property of uh, the dot product uh, basically if you have something like this and let me go ahead and uh, expand this pull back a little bit um, let me go ahead and view this from the side. So if you have two vectors, and right now I set up this scene so it does some calculation behind the scenes, but it's basically doing a dot product. Uh, these are two vectors. You have one that's hitting in this direction on the positive z, and this one that's going on the positive y. Well, the the next property or the yeah, the next property of the dot product is that the value of the dot product, you can think of it as 
the area that this vector projects onto this vector. So right now, because they're perfectly uh, perpendicular, this projection, if you try to project the area of this vector, which is zero basically, has no area, into this vector you're going to get zero. But if you go ahead and select this, uh, let me go ahead and uh, get out of here. Actually, you know, I might be able to access it, oops, through here. So if I go ahead and select this object and I do a rotation, uh, uh, let me do a tab. No, what? Let me. Uh, I think I went into the geometry by mistake. Let's go back into the null. Yeah, so I'm going to go up one level. And if we go ahead and we select this object, let me move this out of the way, make this a little bit bigger. So as you can see, there's zero projection. But if I take this object right here and I rotate it uh, along the x axis, Actually, no, let me grab the other one, this one right here, and I rotate it along the x-axis. You can see that it is changing the value, right? And if I move it all the way to get 0 0.5, um, let me move slowly. and Okay, so it's somewhere below this. All right, so 30 degrees is 0 0.5. So if you look at this, uh, pretty much if you project a line going down here, and I'm going to try to do this in post, but if you project a line, you'll see that this area right here, uh, basically this vector, if you project it down into this one, right now it's using half of the area of this vector right here. So that's pretty much what the 0 0.5 gives you. If I keep improving, in increasing this value, you'll see that eventually, you get a value of 1 when it projects 100% in the area of the other vector. So what this means, and if you look at the number and the property in, in it, is basically you have a facing ratio here. So if the object is facing completely away, if this vector is facing completely away on 90 degrees from this vector over here, it's going to be 0. But if they're pointing in the exact same location, it's going to give you a value of 1. So when you stop and think about it, this is how illumination is done in, in like, uh, basic illumination is done in rendering. Because basically, if you have a light and you have a surface and, you know, there's a light vector, there's a vector that goes from the light all the way to the surface. And if the normal of the surface and the vector, the ray of the light match in directions, that means that that light has 100% intensity at that shading normal at that point. Um, likewise, if the normal points 90 degrees or more away from the light, as we do in this example over here, that means that the light is going to have zero value. So once again, if you think of this vector as being the normal of the surface and this vector as being the normal of the light, if the light is at 90 degrees, which is what it is right now, towards this normal, then that means it's going to have zero influence. But if the light was rotated and it came from the same direction, right there, it's going to have one intensity. If the light is about 45 degrees um, away, so that's around 45 degrees, it's going to have about 0 0.7 uh, intensity if you think of it as a pure Lambert function. And you'll see later on when we do this in RenderMan, uh, that's how the Lambert uh, function, uh, the diffuse, basic diffuse function is done by doing a dot product between uh, the normal and the light vector. So that is pretty much the very important property I wanted to show you guys. Um, this number also has an equality, and I'm going to show it down here. And the equality of it is basically uh, the dot product of A and B, just like over here you can compute it by doing this. It's also equal to... Um, the multiplication of the two uh, vectors multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the vectors, right? So what this means is that you would multiply these two vectors together 
and then you can multiply that by the cosine of the angle between these two uh, vectors. Now, in computer graphics, most of the time you're going to be dealing with what's known as normalized uh, vectors or normalized normals. And these are vectors and normals that have a unit of one. Uh, the reason we do this is because math becomes a lot easier, a lot more efficient to do. And you'll see an example right now. For instance, if these two vectors are one, then one times one equals one. And then if you multiply that by this, it's not going to change the value of this right here. So that allows you to eliminate a vector multiplication for every time you're, you're doing a dot product, uh, When you, if you think about from from that perspective. So that's why we almost always use normalized uh, vectors, and that's why basically a dot b can also be thought of as the cosine of the angle between the two vectors if the vectors are normalized. So that is pretty much the basis of dot product. Um, let's try to look at how it can be used. Uh, like I said before, um, dot product is heavily used when you're doing a diffuse lookup for shading because basically you have the facing ratio of the surface normal against a light or against many lights. Um, you can also use the dot product to solve and create uh, special effects in shaders. For instance, let's say that you're trying to do a shader that is kind of like a ghost shader where you don't want a hard edge on your object. Well, very easily what you can do is just do a dot product between the surface normal and the camera. And what that's going to do is basically make sure that by the time the opacity of the object reaches 90 degrees away from the camera, it's going to fade all the way to zero. So this is going to give you a transparent object on the edges. Likewise, if you use the same effect, but you invert the value inside your shader, what you're going to have is something like an X-ray shader. And we have seen this kind of effect used in, you know, in, in, in many different uh, renders out there. And if you've ever seen an X-ray shader, pretty much that's all it's doing. It's doing a facing ratio between the camera and the surface normal, but it is inverting its value. Um, something else that you can do with the dot vector. Um, uh, you can do any kind of follow -up effect in, uh, you know, based on the facing ratio of the object and another object. So, for instance, you can set up a scene where you had a mountain and you're trying to determine uh, where the mountain would have snow if it's snowing. Well, you can do is you can create a locator and then basically do the facing ratio between the current shading point and the vector between the shading point and this locator. And that will allow you to do is make sure that, uh, you know, if light is think of it this way if snow is falling down straight from the top to the bottom and there's no wind or anything and you try to shade some object uh, this is probably the kind of image that you're gonna see where basically anything that's past the 90 degrees uh, from the facing ratio of uh, with the with a vector pointing up is pretty much going to not have any snow on it uh, anything within that range is going to have snow on it. So these are some of the examples you can use uh, dot product for. Uh, like I said, anytime you need a facing ratio of any kind, you can use the dot product. And as you saw over here in our Python shell, it is very easy to calculate by just doing this multiplication right here. Or if you're using a scripting software or if you're using a shading language of any kind, uh, you can just go ahead and use the built-in API that allows you to do that. Uh, I think that the more you use it, the more you're going to realize how important this operation is and how useful it is. So I hope you guys uh, take the most out of this video and uh, you guys will see us use the dot product a lot as we keep developing uh, scripts, tools, and shaders. So thank you very much and talk to you guys later.